We'll just establish a quorum, please. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, I'm present. Commissioner O'Brien. I am here. Commissioner Zuniga. Uh, here. Good morning, everybody. And Commissioner Stevens. Here. Good morning, everyone. And I'm here, and this is May Day. Um, and um, I will reiterate um, that given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from the global coronavirus pandemic, Governor Baker issued an order to provide limited relief from certain provisions of the open meeting law to protect the health and safety of those who wish to participate in and um, attend our, our public meetings. In keeping with the guidance provided, the commission will conduct this public meeting utilizing remote collaborative technology. And if there's any technical problem, we will give advice on our website at massgaming.com to reestablish a connection. <clears throat> um, I want to thank everybody for attending. We've, um, we extend the invitation to all of our staff, and it's, um, I'm very appreciative of how many members of our, of our team join us in these meetings, so thank you. And of course, uh, to the members of the public media who are joining us today. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to call this meeting to order Friday, April 3rd, 10 a.m. This is Massachusetts Gaming Commission's public meeting number 300. And for at least three of my colleagues, never mind the entire many members of the team, um, that is quite a history for you. So um, mark number 300 virtually. Um, moving on the agenda, item number two, we have an executive staff update from Interim Executive Director Karen Wells and um, our Director of Racing and Chief Veterinarian, Dr. Alex Lightbaum. Karen, good morning. Good morning. Uh, just as for the uh, critical business of the day, uh, the governor has extended uh, his order, the shutdown order regarding the coronavirus uh, through uh, May 18th. So it's my recommendation that the commission parallel that and extend that temporary suspension of the operations at the free gaming establishments until May 18th. And do we have questions and comments from fellow commissioners? And I'll just, if you want to wave um, or lean in. So, Commissioner Cameron. Thank you. Um, and no, obviously, um, we were, uh, you know, waiting for the governor to come out with uh, new um, orders, and uh, it's entirely appropriate for us to follow suit um, with uh, all those experts that came to those decisions about moving it two more weeks. So I think it is certainly appropriate that we follow suit, and the recommendation is a good one by our interim director. Any further questions or comments? regarding this proposal I, I just a comment i agree it's it's obviously the right thing to do and and mandate it at this point um but i don't know if now or the next meeting is the time to talk about um next steps in terms of you know continuing to get advice etc from uh, the governor and the public health sector but also um our licensees in terms of um you know as we hopefully get more clarity at the, by the end of the month um, what the summer may look like, but that may be a conversation for a future meeting. Excellent. Any further questions? Um, <clears throat> we do need a vote on this matter. Do I have a motion? So, Madam Chair, I, um, I move that the commission approve um, the recommendation of the executive uh, director um, to follow the governor's orders and uh, move our time frame uh, and keep uh, keep the licenses, keep the casinos closed until the 18th of May. A second. Any discussion, amendment, edit? Okay, barring none, um, I'll do a roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes. 5 0, Shara, thank you. Moving on to Dr. Lightbound. 
Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have uh, spoken with the three racing licensees and they're aware of the governor's extension of the order to May 18th and um, they agree to continue to abide by it um, for simulcasting and um, as we've done in the past, they will continue uh, Suffolk and Plain Ridge to do online account wagering. Uh, Alex, uh, I thank you for that update. Um, just a quick question, actually. Um, I saw on the news today that uh, the Kentucky Derby, which was supposed to run tomorrow, has obviously been rescheduled, but they're doing a, uh, a virtual Kentucky Derby. Do you happen to know offhand whether that is open to any online betting or whether that is just for betting for recreation? I think I heard something about contributions or winnings being donated to COVID-19 uh, charities. I, I've heard about the um, race that they're putting together, but I'm not sure um, on the betting angle. Okay. All right. Thank you. It'll be interesting to watch. We've obviously learned, heard a lot about historical racing, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, the interest is. Tomorrow. Correct. Any further questions for Alex? Okay. We do not need a vote. Um, we've been advised by... Um, uh, Legal that we're all set on that and keeping with our past, our past practice. Um, with that, I do want to move on to just item number three, just really to build on Commissioner O'Brien's remarks earlier. Um, when we first decided to temporarily suspend operations at the uh, state's three gaming facilities, the commission and licensees um, held a shared view that public health was paramount to all other considerations, and at that time the urgent circumstances required us to move quickly and decisively. The timeline, as we recognize today, is still uncertain. However, our attention is now focused on developing a, a reopening, a responsible, I'm sorry, restart uh, plan, and maximizing this time that we do have to establish guidelines <clears throat> in coordination and collaboration with key stakeholders including the three licensees, state and local leaders, and of course, public health experts. We'll have the opportunity, as we've recognized in our early meetings, to leverage our internal expertise, and it appears to learn from other jurisdictions. Additionally, we will closely monitor guidance under development by the Governor's Reopening Advisory Board. <clears throat> Our shared priority of public health remains paramount in our decision making as we determine how to proceed in a post pandemic environment. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> to support the work already in progress under the leadership of interim executive director Wells, an internal restart working group will be convened. This group will help in the development of the work plan and identify early on issues for the commission's consideration to facilitate its agile action on key policy and regulatory matters as we proceed in this matter. This working group will assist with oversight and planning for two primary areas that Ms. Wells has identified as core to a safe and sustainable reopening plan. And while she'll expound on this at our next meeting next Thursday, I'd like for Karen to just um, give us a, a snapshot of those two areas, please. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. At, you know, as I mentioned at the last meeting, there's really two, two buckets. There's the technical opening, and then because of the situation we find ourselves in now, we sort of have health and safety issues that we need to address. So uh, as far as the te technical opening uh, part of the uh, procedures, the technical opening protocols and procedures will consist of an assessment of the regulatory process required to bring casinos back online including an extensive operations checklist that ensures the necessary compliance and integrity standards. So the second piece is obviously the health and safety given the coronavirus um, pandemic that we're all dealing with. Uh, that involves health and safety operational planning that will address a comprehensive opening strategy regarding measures necessary to prioritize the well-being of casino guests and employees. Topics there are going to include, but not be limited to, enhanced sanitation procedures, employee training, physical distancing, occupational, pardon me, occupancy limitations, and any other guidance provided by public health authorities. 
the plan will also need to account for what procedures will be necessary in the event of a restart setback. The other piece of that, uh, in addition, will be uh, developing in parallel protocols and procedures for the reopening of the Massachusetts Gaming Commission office to ensure a safe return to the office for those MGC employees. So that's the, so that's the overview that we're going to be looking at uh, over the next several weeks. Excellent. Thank you. In terms of timing, as determined today, we'll continue to follow the state's lead. And then we look forward to Ms. Wells um, updating us on the process on a regular cadence, but particularly we'll look forward to next week. Uh, this difficult set of circumstances has presented, as we know, the word we hear so frequently, an unprecedented global challenge. As so many have said, we are, in all, we are <clears throat> all in this together. An effective reopening plan will require sustained cooperation from all involved, so thank you to the MGC team and our licensees for your hard work, thoughtful diligence, despite this intense and challenging time. And with that, I invite my fellow commissioners to comment, and then we will close this meeting um, and look forward to next Thursday's uh, um, 301st meeting. Any comments? Um, no, just to say that it, it sounds uh, at a very uh, high level, really appropriate and um, and thoughtful. Um, so I'm glad that's uh, that's happening. Uh, I'm just curious if you've established, uh, uh, director, if you have established that uh, working group um, uh, already, or are in the process, and will give us an update of that when uh, next time. So I'm working with um, Karen, a uh, commissioner, on that. And I've been, um, asked uh, uh, Commissioner um, O'Brien to assist in that as well. So there'll be representation from the commission. And then it will be a very small group. It is not intended to duplicate efforts. It's really more of a sounding board. I think, Karen, if you want, wish to add to that. Yeah, so uh, there's a layered approach as well. There's this group, but we also have staff that's working on operational procedures. So we have different groups working on the COVID uh, health, uh, health priorities and the uh, best practices. We also have a, uh, set another group working on the opening checklist. So there's, there's things going on at the staff level. This is more of a higher level thing that the chair is convening. Yeah, Justin, it's really um, uh, just a, another layer that will um, hopefully prove to be efficient during these virtual working times and make sure that the full commission is really apprised on a regular cadence and so that we can be really nimble on our decision making to keep the work proceeding. Um, and, and, and that way we won't um, have too much accumulate down the road that will be difficult to address in a nimble fashion. Other questions? That's great. No, um, well, I, the, the only other thought is really more of a comment. Um, uh, maybe states a little bit of the obvious, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you uh, art articulate them uh, in, in what seems to be the order of priorities, uh, health and safety, um, you know, uh, uh, patrons and, and, um, and employees at the casinos. Um, I'm also interested eventually in the procedures of the uh, opening the MDC offices, but um, I've had to uh, put in the plug here that we've been operating quite successfully um, with the relief from the governor about the open meeting law, by the way, uh, and the help of our IT uh, technology and IT team, um, and uh, I can only imagine that at least some version of these, um, you know, whether it's virtual collaboration or what have you, might uh, be in the in the future uh, when it comes to MGC uh, uh, procedures. But I also, like probably everyone else, looks forward to the time when we can, uh, at least those uh, that are comfortable, come back to the office and operate in a more uh, personal level because there's, um, uh, there's something that's missing a little bit from, uh, from this virtual uh, um, modem. Yeah, I agree with that. The, uh, you know, we, we have an excellent IT department, so our, um, our ability to work remotely has been remarkable. So uh, I think the approach to the MGC office's remote, uh, reopening is going to be employee-centric and seeing what we need to do, what we have to do, 
uh, but, uh, but the focus is on uh, our health and safety of our employees and doing it the right way. I think um, because of, we have all these tools at our disposal, we can have a phased approach and prioritize uh, the health and safety of the, our workforce. And you'll be updating us along the way on that um, and, yes. and appreciate it. So for those members of our, of our team who are just hearing this, uh, stay tuned. Uh, those guidelines are going to be underway. And of course, we have to reflect that things are still very fluid and we really have no sense of the exact timing. But as always, we work to be prepared. Anything further, Commissioner Cameron? I can't see Commissioner O'Brien for some reason. Are you all set? No, Brown? I'm all set. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, plans sound great and thoughtful. Um, so I'm in complete agreement with the, the process. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Commissioner Stebbins? No, I, I think it's a, it's a good game plan going forward. Okay, excellent. Thank you. All right. Um, then uh, looking forward to next week's meeting. And thank you for today's um, um, thoughtful uh, action on a difficult matter. Do I have a motion? Uh, motion to adjourn. I second that. Okay. Any comments, questions? Roll call vote. Commissioner Cameron. Uh, aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye, thank you, everybody. Commissioner Stephens. Aye, thank you, everyone. And I vote yes, and from all of us, thanks. <laughs>